Okay, so I drew and talked about tips on how to raise a guinea pig or adopt one or when you're going to adopt one. And uh, then I listened to the take and it was very scripty. So I'm lazy to record again. So I'm just going to post it anyway. So here you go. <laughs> so Henry Oates stole your heart and now you're considering getting a little bundle of adorable rottenness to call your own. Since I've been asked about guinea pigs and how I raised hen, here are 12 things to consider before adopting a guinea pig. 1. Adopt. Yes, I said adopting a guinea pig and not buying one because there are so many perfect little fellows waiting to be adopted. Just so you know, Henry Oates was adopted from CARE. Um, that stands for Charlie's Animal Rescue Center. They are based in Bangalore and it's not named after my Charlie, another Charlie. <laughs> 2. Consider your lifestyle and their lifespan. Guinea pigs live on an average of 5 to 10 years. If your lifestyle is one where you're out of town a whole lot and don't have anyone to take care of them, it may not be such a great idea to get a pet. Also, if you're in that stage of your life where you're not even sure if you're going to be in the same state or country, that's another worry. It's hard to find homes and even harder letting go. 3. Definitely checking for allergies. This is something you should check, especially if you're allergic to any animal hair. 4. Learn all about guinea pigs. I've had guinea pigs growing up and know a lot about their grooming, shelter, diet, um, and all the rest of the stuff. Of course, you have to research all of this before you get a little piggy. You want to know where you get a good supply of grass, fresh vegetables, timothy hay, etc. Guinea pigs have a natural vitamin C deficiency, so incorporating that into your diet is super important. Five, companions. Guinea pigs are super social. Hence, they are always better off in pair, and hopefully not the same sex because they multiply like, well, guinea pigs. <laughs> I'm lucky to be able to work from home, and Henry Oates being a solo boy is super social with me and Charlie. And this is really important because they can get depressed being on their own. 6. Training. So many people ask if Henry is trained, so you can't really potty train a guinea pig and Henry has designated spots where he poops and pees on instinct. This is outside his cage, but that doesn't mean that I don't find stray poop lying around. <laughs> By the way, it's really easy to clean because they're like pellets. Um, he does, however, respond to me and follows me around, which is something that all my guinea pigs did. 7. Playtime. A lot of people who got guinea pigs mailed me and told me that the guinea pigs aren't as responsive as Henry and are scared. So guinea pigs are naturally a little shy and timid, not overly, but this kind of is based on their personality and they can be. You have to be patient with them. It took many months for Henry to start being a little brave and many more for him to turn into the little big brat he is today. Like with shy children, you just have to be patient and gentle and kind. 8. Cleaning so cleaning is a big part of having a guinea pig. I clean Henry's cage every other day and have to have a stock of old newspaper and hay for his comfort. I used to use um, sawdust. Um, this is guinea pig cage approved sawdust <laughs> that uh, I stopped using for his bedding because he didn't prefer it and it really got super, super messy. I also have to wash his bed and his little sheet every other week because he's messy. And he also gets a bath where I use an imported shampoo called Earth Bath that I absolutely love. You can get it on Amazon.in, but I re recommend someone getting, uh, someone picking it up from abroad because it works out pretty expensive with the import tax and stuff. Nine, cage. I ordered Henry's cage from Amazon too, but you can get a cage from from a pet store. I definitely recommend getting the biggest size you can because they need space. I leave Henry around uh, the house for a lot of the day, but there's some days when I'm not home for half the day and knowing that he has enough space to run around in his cage is pretty nice. 10. Costs. Of course, they're going to be cost involved. Besides the one-time investments like the cage, bed, igloo, igloo being that little shelter inside their cage that they absolutely love, um, shampoo and toys, uh, they also need a regular supply of, of course, vegetables, hay and dry food. Dry food and hay can set you back at about a thousand rupees a month and this is of course considering that there are no required vet visits and that's hopefully ever. 11. Children and pets. Guinea pigs are fantastic with children but sometimes it's not the other way around. Most children are quite gentle, but understanding the child is super important too. Guinea pigs have delicate spines and should be handled 
very gently and not roughly of course. They have to be held correctly and of course never dropped. Many people ask about Charlie and Henry getting along. Henry Oates would never have been adopted if Charlie had an alternate personality and I wasn't 100% sure that he would be okay with another animal. Charlie is really gentle, not hyper, and pretty much has a grandpa-like personality. Yet, it still took weeks of acclimatizing them, and I think it was a few months before I even let Henry run around with Charlie. It had been even more months when I'd let them loose together without my whole attention being on them both. You cannot afford to even second guess or wonder in instances like this. 12. Love. I should actually start with this one, but like any living being, I strongly urge you to think beyond cute and everyone's got one. All living beings deserve a foster home and guinea pigs are absolutely no different. Having said that, they are the cutest and sweetest little fellows. Henry Oates, of course, makes my world go around and Charlie is quite demanding. Um, he's a little brat and my favorite one too. <laughs>